Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to give my support to the amendment as described as laid by the Minister for Home Affairs. Mr. Speaker, this is really a significant step because several times you meet people from the diaspora, especially the younger generation of, of St. Lucians, and they say to you, they want to identify with St. Lucia. They want to be St. Lucian. They want to identify with things St. Lucia, but they need a passport. And we promised them, many people have promised, but we went to New York at a town hall meeting when I was in opposition, and I said to them, if I, we got the privilege of being elected, we'd have initiated the, the amendment of the relevant law so that they could become what we call second generation uh, uh, citizens. It took some time. Um, it took some time for it to happen. There were various discussions because in all these things, sometimes there are, there are people who, who, do not, who do not align with what you want to do. But it took some time, and I always believe once you're doing what is right, you ought to fear nothing, and, you ought, and people will, will come along. It took some time, Mr. Speaker, but we are, here, we are here today, and I want to thank the people in the public service who made this possible, who assisted, who advised on making this amendment possible, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are going to be some administrative issues we have to deal with. Um, we have, we will have to ensure that when the applications come, they do not get in, in a bottleneck. We have to make it seamless so we, can not, we cannot create frustration for people when they apply. Several times the government is, in, initiates processes, initiates laws, and when the, the, the citizen applies, then there are bottlenecks and return and come back and go here. We want to ensure that this is, is seamless. There is one person in particular, a young athlete, Miss Lorenzen, who is an athlete of great repute, of great potential, and she wants to represent St. Lucia at the Olympics, and she's awaiting the passing of that legislation. So I'm sure she's going to be very pleased, and the Lorenzen family, who are a very renowned family, in St. Lucia are going to be very pleased that this decision has passed and their daughter Ansia will be able to take part in the Olympics representing St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. The Lorenzons are from a good sporting family, footballers, cricketers from the constituency and they have a, their, their grandchild is a second generation St. Lucia and she's going to be represent, representing St. Lucia for which all of us are very proud, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this is another promise made by the government of, and we, this is another promise that, that, we, that we, we met, Mr. Speaker. So you can understand the anger that, is, that has to come from the opposition because we're just rolling out, rolling out, rolling out, rolling out things, rolling out projects, rolling out promises. And I've asked, and I've said, when the time comes and we will put out, we will reflect on our manifesto. We will reflect on the things that we've promised and the things that we've done. I am sure, Mr. Speaker, our performance is going to be rated A++. When the time comes for that reflection, Mr. Speaker. So I understand the anger. I understand the need to try to get us off focus. I understand it. I understand it very well, Mr. Speaker. But this is in keeping with, with who we are, what we stand for. And there are some people who say that there is no difference between political parties and all of them are the same, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the longer I remain in the politics, the longer I see the antics of the opposition, I see the difference between the government and the opposition. I see the difference, Mr. Speaker. I see the things that we would never do. And I remember the member for Vifosov as he's walked in. I remember during a particular election campaign, 
we, there was a meeting where we were deciding what is the way forward. We were having a tactical discussion. And somebody made a suggestion that we go in a particular way. And that particular way was a very personal way. But personal, but it will have guarded, uh, guarded legs. And I remember the member for Vuford South, he was leader of the party at the time. He's, he was saying that we are not going that way. And even though it means losing, we are losing, we are not losing if we lose in principle instead of winning with, with no principle. I remember that clearly. And that, that might have caused us to win the election. But he said, we're not going this way. And in spite of the, and that discussion took place at the official residence. And in spite of the discussion and the argument and the, the even, you know, men got, got annoyed, but he said we were not going that way. And I see that happening in our party now. We are not going to go down to the limits that these guys are going, are going. We're not going there. We don't believe in the philosophy of burning the house to kill a rat or even a cockroach. We're not going there, Mr. Speaker. We'll remain, we remain focused. We'll continue to roll out, roll out our premises. We will allow the envy and the hatred. Mr. Speaker, talk, talking about hatred, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I got a letter. I got a letter from the leader of, of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I can, I don't make it a document of the house because I'm sure, you, I'm sure you read it. And in that letter, he said, my enmity, what did he say? Enmity towards him. Mr. Speaker, you think if I have somebody to hate, I'll hate the opposition? I don't hate anybody. How can I hate the leader of the opposition? You think I can do that? You think if God gave me the, gave me the ability to hate, which he hasn't given me, you think if I had it, I'd waste it on him? Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the leader of the opposition to keep this enmity thing and his hatred in his mind and in the mind of his surrogates. I don't hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. There's no reason for me to hate anybody, Mr. Speaker, because God has been good to me. So all this notion that enmity and they hate him and this kind of thing, Tell him to don't hear any surrogates. Tell him to keep that. What I am, I'm for the people of St. Lucia. That's what I'm for. I'm against poverty. I'm against poverty. I'm against victimization. That's what I'm for. I'm against envy. I'm against hatred. And I'm against greed. I don't hate anybody. So when you pull out my letter trying to get sympathy about enmity. Enmity for what? For who? So, Mr. Speaker, I just want to make it clear that this government does not get involved in these kind of things. We are involved in working for the benefit of the people of St. Lucia. Now, Mr. Speaker, that is another manifestation of how we continue to work for the people of St. Lucia, for the people of St. Lucia Mr. Speaker. And I look forward in that term to come to Parliament with legislation to try to augment the investment that people in the diaspora can make in St. Lucia. Especially, and I have discussions with the Minister for Investment and the Minister for Commerce. A special bill, Mr. Speaker, where we will try to encourage, to incentivize people in the diaspora and that, and that these second generation St. Lucians to get certain incentives so that we can return and invest in St. Lucia apart from what they are getting now, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that we have no secret in the CIP program. There's no secret. And uh, I'm going to be responding to the letter. I'm going to respond to the letter, Mr. Speaker. And I've also instructed the members, the minister, that anyone in the civil society people 
who want to have a discussion with him on the CIP program, he can go ahead and have that discussion with them, Mr. Speaker, because there is nothing to hide. We are, I want to also tell you, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday, the cabinet of ministers, we changed the base price for all our products to 200,000 US dollars, as was agreed to in the MOE. St. Lucia was the first country to do that. We were the first country to do it, Mr. Speaker. We did it yesterday in cabinet. We were the first country to do it. We did it yesterday in cabinet, Mr. Speaker. So from right now, we've met the first criteria of all our products being sold at no less than $200,000, Mr. Speaker. We did that yesterday. And Mr. Speaker, we are also in the process of having discussions with an international firm of consultants, global firm, Mr. Speaker, to look into all processes, to look into all procedures, to look into all the options that are available in our CIP program. We have asked certain firms to tender. We've asked certain firms to give proposals, Mr. Speaker. And very soon, we are going to be announcing the firm that won the, 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 the contract. And that firm is going to be asked to look into our entire CIP. Because, you know, we want to ensure that there's nothing to hide. So we're going to get a firm, a firm of experts, not anybody vested interests, to look into our program, our processing our procedures, and report, and report, Mr. Speaker, at the earliest possible opportunity, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I said before, we, these are the two things that we are going to do, Mr. Speaker, right away. The third one, Mr. Speaker, is the idea that we have not presented financial, financial statements or reports to this Honorable House, and there's the reason why that hasn't happened is because there's some complot, something to hide, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, The financial year end for the CIP unit, Mr. Speaker, is in March. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you, St. Lucia is one of the only countries that does that, eh? that has financial statements that represent in, in the parliament about the CIP unit. We, we do that. March is the year end, Mr. Speaker. And the law says that these reports must be tabled in the House by se October, September. By September, by October, I'm being told, after March. In my statement, the House by October, Mr. Speaker, by October. So, the 2024 report is not yet by law. Is not, we have not, is not yet, the time hasn't come yet for it to be, for it to be presented in this Honorable House. So the idea that, a trend, that there is something to hide because the 2024 report has not reached, again, is a myth. Mr. Speaker, the 2023 report, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is done by external auditors. Now, any of you who know about how external auditors work, Mr. Speaker, external auditors work on their time. And in that case, the external auditors have asked for an extension to present the report, Mr. Speaker. All the work, all the field audit work for the 2023 report, I've been told, has been done by the auditors. That's what, that, what, that's what my information tells me. All the audit work has been done. So the CIP unit has not hidden from the auditors. But I'm sure the minister, the member for Sufer will tell you, external auditors, they ask questions, they ask questions, and sometimes you have to come back and return, etc., etc. So the CIP unit, they have engaged the auditors, the auditors have done their work, and the only reason why the report has not been tabled is because the auditors have not presented them, Mr. Speaker. That's all. So there is no, it's not because anything is hidden that these reports have not come to this honorable house. 
and the minister has, has assured me that he will push the, 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 the auditors to ensure that the, the reports for 2024 be here by October, and those are 2023 will come as early as possible, Mr. Speaker. But we understand there has been a delay, but the delay is not because there's anything to hide. The delay is because the external auditors have not completed their, 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 their inspection or their audit, and that is why we don't have a report, Mr. Speaker. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I have made the point, and I'll make it again, Mr. Speaker, that there are matters that have been filed in the courts of the, of the United States and we are awaiting the, the, the results of these matters, Mr. Speaker. We, and we're not going to comment on any matter that is already in, in, in the courts. That is our position. So, Mr. Speaker, our position is very clear. We will continue in the CIP program to exercise and to look into ways where we can continue to have stringent due diligence processes to safeguard our program. That is going to continue, Mr. Speaker. It was always there, and it's going to be continuing as we go in the future, into the future, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we also want to, ensure, want to tell our partners that we will do all it takes to protect the integrity and the transparency of our CIP program. And it's very sad, Mr. Speaker, where there are some people who really would like the program to collapse because they believe that they would benefit, Mr. Speaker. It's very sad. It's a very sad day when we've lost all our nationalistic pride, all of our love for country, all our love for our people. Because of raw politics, we will do whatever we can do to destroy this country so that we believe we can get political power, Mr. Speaker. But these second generation citizens that we are making it easy for them to get passports, they'll understand and they will return to St. Lucia or they will make a more meaningful contribution to St. Lucia because of the fact we have recognized them as sons and daughters of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to say to the public, through you, Mr. Speaker, that this is a revolutionary amendment. It's another promise that we've made and we've kept, and I want to implore the people who are administering it that we've passed the law, but we expect them to do what they have to do to advise us on any bottlenecks in the process. Too many times bottlenecks exist, which as legislators, we, we do not see it, but the people who are on the ground see it, and instead of asking us to change it, they do not, they cause the public to be dissatisfied. So I want to thank them for the work they've done so far, and tell them that this government is open to advice. Sometimes they criticize me when I say, I do not know something, Mr. Speaker. I only have X amount of knowledge, I'm not, I don't know everything, and I will not tell the public I know everything, Mr. Speaker. What I know is that I am for performance, and I'm for integrity, and I'm for the well-being of St. Lucia. That is what I know, Mr. Speaker. That's what I know, and that's what I stand for. That's what I stand for, Mr. Speaker. And once we are in government, we'll continue to ensure that St. Lucia keeps the higher standards, Mr. Speaker, and the people of St. Lucia benefit from the policies of the government of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.